Today on Locked on Blue Jackets, our season review continues as we are looking at another guy that probably wasn't supposed to be on the team this season. Uh, today, we're going to be reviewing Brendan Gaunt's season with both Cleveland and Columbus. Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster. Thank you for joining me. If this is your first listen of the day, your second listen, your third watch, whatever it is, I appreciate you. But uh, thanks for stopping on by. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and also on YouTube. You're never going to have to get behind paywall for a Locked On product. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button to... Uh, Get them directly onto your podcast feed. I uh, will be continuing today my season review of players. We're up to uh, jersey number 23, I believe, today. Uh, we're going to be looking at Brendan Gaunt, who, I'm not going to lie, another surprise of the season for me. Uh, he was a guy that when I saw that they had signed him, I was like, oh, okay, I see, because... Uh, He's not the first Gaunt that the Blue Jackets have had in the organization. His brother Cameron Gaunt played very briefly for the Cleveland Monsters, or I believe they were the Lake Erie Monsters then even. Um, and so I was kind of expecting more of the same, honestly. And I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, so we'll kind of start out with looking at Brendan Gaunt in Cleveland, and then we'll uh, go ahead and take a look at his work in the NHL this season, and then we'll take a look at kind of maybe what... What could happen next season with uh, with Gaunt? But uh, we'll start off. Bren Gaunt, former first-round pick. Uh, he was picked 26th overall in 2012 by the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, played four years in the OHL before making the jump to pros. Uh, most of his uh, career since now, until now has been with either the Vancouver Canucks or the Utah Comets. Uh, he's played a handful of NHL games. He's never played a f- what I would consider a full season for either the NHL or the AHL. Well, he played 74 games in his rookie season for Utica. He played 60 games with Utica in his final season with them. Uh, last season, he was with the, uh, the Lakers in the SHL over in Sweden. Uh, had 12 points in 18 games for them. And then uh, this season came back over to... North America signed with the uh, signed with the Blue Jackets, I believe, uh, a two way contract. Now it's been started off with the Cleveland Monsters. Uh, played a fair amount of games with the Cleveland Monsters. Actually, yeah, he played thirty nine games with them, sixteen goals, twelve points. When he was called up, he was, I believe, leading the team in points by a pretty wide margin. Because you know, as we've previously mentioned, the uh, the Cliff Monsters were not very good this season. So to get a guy like Brendan Gaunt, who was, you know, leading the team, was a big surprise for many, many reasons. Um, but yeah, he turned out to be w- like way far away from the player I was expecting him to be. Honestly, uh, I was expecting a guy to take stupid penalties and uh, maybe eat some minutes if he can stay out of the box long enough. But uh he was he was kind of the opposite of that. He was he was one of their best players for a large part of the season. Obviously earned his call up. Uh, did not score his first NHL goal with Blue Jackets, but uh, he scored I don't know like his eighth or something. Uh, he had previously scored one goal in 2015, uh, four goals in 2017, one goal in 2018. And then that was that was it. So he got a career high in uh, in goals this season for the Blue Jackets, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But he again was a player that took advantage of injuries and took advantage of guys not being around in the lineup. And kind of a similar ish story to Justin Danforth. I think he's not. I think this is about as good 
as Brendan Gaunt is going to get, I don't know that we're going to get a different, better Gaunt next season if he stays. Again, that's what we're going to talk about in a little bit. But he is a guy that was doing really, really well for Cleveland Monsters. Uh, they missed him, honestly. I think they suffered when he was called up, which is a shame. Um, but when you're playing... And I don't think... Again, this is something we're going to talk about a little bit and how he played in the NHL. But the Cleveland Monsters missed him. But he didn't really give the NHL, he didn't give the Blue Jackets a chance to be like, hey, we're going to send you, we're going to send you back down. Uh, either because, like I said, of injuries or because the team needed somebody to play on the fourth line. And, you know, he was part of that bottom six that I think, yeah, we could have asked, we could have got a little more from, but he stabilized that fourth line, I think, uh, between he and Eric Robinson. Um, I think that was, it was a good duo. Um, kind of mixed around a little bit. Uh, Carson Meyer spent some time there. Uh, Kent Johnson spent some time there for some reason. I've talked about that already. We're not going to go into that again. But um, yeah, Brennan Gaunt was a, Brennan Gaunt was a big, big surprise, I think. Um, not even because of his NHL play, but because I was expecting functionally nothing from him from him in the AHL, and he turned around and surprised me. Um, so in a minute, we're going to talk a little bit about his NHL play, uh, because, you know, I kind of touched on it briefly, but we'll talk a little bit about how successful he was, what he was successful at, um, things like that. But first, I want to tell you about Built Bar, because Built Bar has a brand new product, and I am so, so excited about it. Built granola bars are finally here. They come in three flavors. You can get chocolate peanut butter, you can get chocolate coconut, or you can get white chocolate berry. If you want to try all three flavors, you can get a mixed box at built.com right now. These are super different from the bars and the puffs. They are uh, crunchy and chewy. You know, I know the bars are kind of a little bit softer. Obviously, the marshmallow puff is uh, very, very soft. A uh, built granola bar is. I mean, it's it's a granola bar, but instead of a regular granola bar, it is packed with protein. It is low in carbs, low in sugar, low in calories. It is a much better granola than the original regular granola, honestly. Um, so if you've been waiting for a healthy and delicious granola bar to hit the market, now is your time. Head to built.com to get built granola bars. If you use promo code LOCKED15, you can get 15% off your order. Once again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. So Brennan Gaunt in the NHL, again, was a guy. I was like, oh, this is neat. He's, you know, he hasn't been in the NHL in a couple of years. Uh, his last stint in the NHL was 2019-2020. He had one game with the Boston Bruins. Uh, so his last real substantial NHL time was 2017-18, where he played 37 games with Vancouver Canucks, had six points in those. Uh, in 30 games with the Blue Jackets, he had seven points, which uh, I believe is a career high for him. Uh, and he did that in less games than any other previous. So his previous high was this, the 37 games uh, season. He had six points. Uh he only played 30 games with the Blue Jackets and had seven points. So, you know, this was a career high season for him in, uh, I think, the least substantial amount of games, um, if that makes sense. So he played uh, 20 games in 15-16, he played 57 in 16-17, 37 in 17-18, in only three in 18-19, and then one in 19-20. So, you know, of the four-ish seasons that he played, like a substantial amount, uh, he didn't get more than six points, which is not not great, uh, especially when you look at the guy as, you know, a former first-round pick. 26th overall, they're not, like, a sure thing. Yes, definitely going to make the NHL, definitely going to be a difference maker, but you'd think for a first-round pick, you'd want them to at least be a regular NHL player, I think. Um, and so he didn't really deliver on that. And whether it was, again, like, I talked a little bit about taking advantage of injuries, but I also think taking advantage of lineup weaknesses. Um, this is something I talked a little bit about with, um, I think I talked about it with uh, with Will Scouch or Scouching, of guys that take advantage of slightly weaker lineups. Like, I don't know that Cole Sillinger would have necessarily made the NHL playing for 
for example, Toronto or Tampa Bay or Colorado. You know, I couldn't see him in those lineups. The Blue Jackets have a slightly weaker lineup, and I think it's given guys like Gorns a chance to show that they can be uh, not necessarily a difference maker, but I'm I'm pretty happy with, with how Gorns played. Um, he's on a near enough league minimum contract, I think. Uh, I don't know if Cap Friendly will have the numbers because it's rolled over, but... Um, He's a UFA, so we're going to talk about that in uh, in just a minute. His most recent contract was uh, a one year contract, seven hundred and fifty thousand. So that's uh, that's the thing. He's came super super cheap. Was essentially going to be an uh, an AHL player. I think I thought ended up getting called up. Really, kind of took over with that uh with that opportunity and seven points for uh seven hundred and fifty thousand you know a point every hundred thousand dollars is not not nothing you know I think you you'd probably like a little more offense but I don't know that 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 you're looking for that from Brennan Gaunt's um he was decent on the penalty kill, I thought. He was pretty good defensively at even strength. Um, you know, he's a very, very prototypical kind of fourth line, a checking line, you know? So I think he kind of did exactly what it says on the tin, so to speak. Um, I have no I have no problems with uh, with Brennan Gaunt. Um, he even, for the most part, managed to stay out of the box, which you cannot be said for some of his other... Uh, seasons he had six minor penalties in 30 games which I believe it is if my math is right one minor penalty every five games which is not extremely not nothing considering some blue jackets who will remain nameless just had a, like what seemed to be a constant march to the penalty box so all in all pretty happy with with Brennan Gaunt's and uh, in a minute we're going to talk a little bit about his potential future with the team uh, whether I would I personally would sign him, whether I think Yamaka Kalainen will re-sign him. So that is, uh, that's coming up next on Locks on Blue Jackets. So it all comes down to money, is the thing. Uh, Brennan Gaunt is one of the players that needs a new contract. He's one of the, uh, he might be the only UFA that the Blue Jackets are re-signing, uh, or thinking about re-signing. Most of their players are RFAs. Now, the only other, yeah, the only other UFA, uh, Corpusalo, we've got to be a UFA. He signed an extension. Dean Kukan is a UFA, but he's going back to Switzerland. He won't be on the team next season. Um, and every other expired contract is RFA. So that gives Brett and Gaunt a little bit more leeway. Um, he doesn't have to sign with the Blue Jackets. He could go and maybe command a little bit more money elsewhere. But if I'm Gekalainen, and I try to sign him to essentially the same contract but with a little bit of a, a pay bump honestly um i think if you can get bread and gaunts for under a million for the next two years then i i don't know i would i would sign that contract i think gaunts would sign that contract potentially you could get upwards of a million so you know from a different uh, less less savvy gm but i don't know the blue jackets have the cap space and i think they can really benefit from having guys like gaunts signed super cheap guys that can fill that bottom six and uh especially when you look at you know uh sean corrali making 2.5 eric robinson's making 1.6 contracts like brennan gaunces are pretty pretty substantial um you know obviously i think the blue checks have about 26 million in cap space uh almost 27 million in cap space but you've got to imagine that at least 10 of that is going to line a so you know, call it 17 million to re-sign uh, Emil Bemstrom, potentially Carson Meyer, Jack Rostovic, Brennan Gaunt, uh, Nick Blankenberg, Anna Boquist, Gabriel Carlson, if he comes back, Daniel Tarasov needs a contract, uh, Josh Dunn, Trofix Walensky, Liam Foodie, Kevin Stenland, Tyler Sakura, they all need contracts. Uh, Scott Harrington needs a contract. You know, it's... If I'm if I'm Kekalainen, I'm taking 
I'm, I'm, I'm bringing Gre- Brennan Gorns back. He can play on that fourth line. He's a veteran. You don't have to worry about him. And uh, I think... I don't necessarily think he's going to be much better than he was this season. Like I said earlier, I think this is about what, you, what you're what you going to get from Brennan Gorns. But, you know, he scored five goals this season in 30 games. If you extrapolate that to a full season, that's, I don't know, maybe 12 or 13 goals. And if you're getting 10 goals out of a league, you know, what's essentially less than a million dollar a season player, I think that's... I don't know, I think that's a, a choice that you make. So uh in terms of letter grades, which I didn't didn't really consider until until just now, um honestly I'd give him a B. Um mostly because I'm not grading on a curve, I don't think. I don't really understand how grading on a curve works. I'm not gonna lie, that's that's a very American concept and I don't understand it, but I think when you look at what we expected from Brandon Gaunt, what we got and what we could expect to get, I think a B in a vacuum is is pretty good. If we're grading based on, you know, well, obvi- you know, if you look at, uh, you know, spoiler alert, I'll be watching this tomorrow's episode, and he's probably going to get an A. You know, the difference between get it, giving him an A and giving Brennan Gorn to B, I think, is is worlds away because you can't grade them on the same scale. So if we look at Brennan Gorn in a vacuum, look at what he did look at how good he was for the bottom six of this team in you know a year when it was very uh it's a very wibbly wobbly lineup then yeah i'm i'm happy to give him a b maybe a b minus but that's kind of that's kind of where i'm at with brennan gorns pretty happy with him as far as he goes um and looking forward to seeing him next season whether he's a blue jacket or not i think he probably will be i'd like to think he is but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, and that's all I've got for you today. Uh, like I said, just a little bit ago, tomorrow's episode is going to be about Oliver Bjorkstrand. So uh, make sure you tune in for that. I've got lots and lots of very nice things to say about everybody's favorite underrated goal scoring blue jacket. And uh, I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J A K O B F O R S T E R. If you. Uh, Want to follow the podcast Twitter? It is LO underscore Blue Jacket. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at lockedonbluejackets at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, I will be back tomorrow with a brand new episode. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Thank you for making all of my episodes your first listen of the day. You know, fingers crossed. And uh, until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.